Here's your smart fact of the day. By now, if you've not been living under a rock somewhere, you probably have heard of this guy called Gary V, right? Now, Gary V, his net worth is supposed to be estimated around $160 million. And he's this big entrepreneur, you know, uh, social media star who creates a lot of content every day uh, or almost every day, or at least he urges us to do. Did you know how he got famous? He started a YouTube show, which was like a daily webcast on YouTube, which was covering wine because his dad owned a wine store. He renamed the store Wine Library and launched online sales and he did that way back in 2006. Welcome to Smarter with Sid. And in today's episode, what we are going to try and do is not deconstruct Gary V, but we are trying to figure out how do you learn from an internet guru? What lessons do you take and what lessons don't you take? Whether it's Gary V or Naval Ravikant or Kunal Shah or Jordan Peterson or anybody else. Let's go. So here's the context behind the show. As you know, and Smarter with Sid, what we try to do is figure out why, you know, we are studying something. Because the only way in which we can get 1% smarter is have a good background to why we are studying what we are studying, then get down to first principles, and then maybe have some takeaways on, on what to do. So today, what I wanted to explore was look at the internet gurus, right, and their wisdom, and try and deconstruct them. Because a lot of us, in fact, almost all of us want to listen to these internet gurus or are going to listen to these internet gurus at some point in time. But not necessarily knowing what we are doing. We don't know what we are doing when we are listening to them. And I'm just going to kind of talk about it. So if you look at, say, Gary V, or if you look at Kunal Shah of Cred fame, or if you look at Naval Ravikant, you know, of Twitter fame, or if you look at Jordan Peterson, now everybody's talking of, uh, you know, how Jordan Peterson's illness has been and, and stuff like that, especially the hardcore fans. You will have dividing opinions and you will have uh, people with polarized views. You either love them or hate them or you have an opinion of them. You may secretly love them, but, you know, publicly hate them. Whatever it may be, it depends upon your company uh, you keep and, and stuff. But essentially, all of these guys have achieved fame because of the wisdom, the gyan, the knowledge that they have dispensed on the internet. And I wanted to try to figure out you know, how do you deal with an internet guru and how can an internet guru actually make a positive impact on your life and not a negative one? So this is the, the kind of context that I wanted to set. Now, if I look at, let's say somebody uh, just, you know, replace the words Gary V with any of the other ones. But if you just look at um, Gary V, for instance, because he's such a, you know, a character. If you look at the energy that with, which he uses to to develop his content, it's an amazing amount of energy. I mean, whether you like him or you hate him, don't you see that the energy that he's giving is incredible and that energy itself is contagious and it makes you feel like getting up and doing something, you know. It just makes you feel like, uh, you know, uh, moving about, being busy, you know, working hard and all of that. And that's great if that's the kind of thing that you're looking out for. A lot of times what we are actually looking out for to my mind, when we are looking at an internet guru, I mean, I mean, here's the first principle of all all of this, is that we are looking at inspiration rather than content. Now, let me explain what I mean. I think a lot of times we are trying to figure out how do I get motivated? How do I energize myself? How do I, you know, uh, activate things? How do I just push myself? How do I do things which are hard to do or hard to achieve? And uh, these guys, with the way in which they deliver that content, are providing that stimulus for that energy. Now, once you realize something like this, you may suddenly realize that, oh, okay, I don't need this. I don't need uh, somebody else to provide me that stimulus. Or maybe you do realize that I do need this, uh, you know, kick up the bum sometimes. And uh, maybe uh, you'll get better at actually identifying who is it that will inspire you to take action. The problem arises is, uh, you know, arises when we are looking at these people and their content very seriously. Now, this is a problem specifically with, you know, short form video content when you can't really understand 
the depth of the subject matter that resides in the head of the person who's speaking it. So if you look at, uh, you know, these short uh, video clips, or if you look at all of these uh, memes, or if you look at, you know, uh, the, some, of, some of those wonderful, clever sound bites, those sound really good. Um, but sometimes they're often repeated in different ways, or they are not specifically useful for you, uh, or they don't have any practical application, but they're high on energy. And we are reacting to the energy rather than the content. So I would recommend first, let's stop that. I mean, what's the next thing you do? So if you've listened to somebody like Jordan Peterson, and if you listen to his lectures, you'll soon realize that the man has got a lot of depth. But more than depth, you know, his content also comes with a lot of bias. So you will not even understand because he's such a magnificent storyteller where the bias is creeping in and where it's not. With Gary V, you'll soon feel that this is the only way to do things. Otherwise, you know, you're doomed for failure. With Naval Ravikant, it will come in in the form of a tweet, but something similar, right? I mean, this is the way things are. Or with Kunal Shah, it comes with so much of authority. Yeah, I've, you know, uh, I, I, I think that the answer is X plus Y equal to Z. And you soon realize that the content is very powerful. It is delivered in a very strong way, but it is belonging to that person. And while it might be that person's truth and while that might resonate with you for a certain period of time, it's quite possible that there are other perspectives and alternatives. And not only will there be other perspectives and alternatives, you yourself may not necessarily like that content after say a month or two, right? If you listen to it carefully or if you listen to it in the company of a friend who is probably going to be a little more critical than you and look at, at the same person differently. So I would recommend looking at content uh, in, in a very uh, pragmatic way. You've got to ask yourself, how is this content applicable to my life right now? Can I use it? Can I actually do something about it? If you can, wonderful, do something about it and maybe write it down. So, you know, uh, you know that this guy has been good. But my recommendation, and that is incredibly important for us to kind of ponder, is to not become part of a tribe that that person represents. You know, sometimes what happens is that we let our common sense, uh, you know, uh, go away. We look at uh, the uh, the tribal aspect of our humanity and then we just belong and we come with our biases. And my recommendation would be not to do that because it's not going to be useful for you, nor is it going to be actually practical for you to be just part of a tribe you're going to stay where you are and Gary Vee is going to go uh, and, and get another million subscribers for himself that's not what you want really when you're looking at an internet based guru what you're trying to figure out is how can this be practically applicable to my life so instead of actually belonging to a tribe and just confirming your own biases to yourself maybe what you can do is just pull out the wonderful insight uh, that these guys have got Use that insight and apply it in your life and perhaps also get a contrarian perspective to a popular internet-based guru and uh, kind of take that perspective in as well. Now, that's what you call critical thinking or whatever you want to call it. But importantly, if you do that, you will be better off. And my suggestion would be, my final suggestion would be to not look at just what those people are saying, but also figure out what their story is and how they've reached where they've reached. Like if you look at Gary V and the fact that he started a daily YouTube show on his dad's wine store and that's how he became big and that's how he became successful and famous and that's where he's getting his insights from. There is a big and maybe even bigger lesson there than all the content that he is giving currently. Or if you look at the way in which Jordan Peterson is looking at his battles with, you know, uh, uh, benzodiazepam addiction and how he's gotten out of it, well, there's a bigger truth there. So I personally find that insights are fantastic, but background stories also tell us where that person is coming from. So internet gurus, right? Internet gurus, tread with care, make sure that you get the insight, apply that insight before you belong to that tribe. And that's what I would recommend. Certainly uh, for all uh, listeners on Smarter with Sid, that's what, how I will recommend you listen to me. If you think I'm an internet guru, I certainly am not. I'm just trying to become 1% smarter along with the rest of you. And I hope you like this episode of Smarter with Sid. If you like it, 
do subscribe like this podcast subscribe to this podcast if you like who i am i'm the traveling professor on linkedin and on instagram and hey like podcasts like these well ivm's got a lot of wonderful stuff for you on that happy note then on that happy note